Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Adrienne Stevenson, and we are excited to have gotten to work with Fine Home Building to do some illustrations for their Fine Home Building California House build for 2018. The first set of illustrations that I created are in the August-September issue of Fine Home Building. You can see on this spread there is an illustration of a foundation detail with what I'm calling a ghost house over the top. And then we also did this detail with textured CAD detail illustration. We'll cover that later. But today I kind of wanted to talk about how I created this image. And I used Chief Architect and Photoshop in order to prepare those images to create this illustration. So let's go into Chief Architect. What I've actually done here is I created the entire house. So I modeled the house using the regular Chief Architect tools. And then I saved it off as a copy. I named this one Ghost House. And the reason that I did that is in order to achieve that image that has kind of the really simple and faded lines over the top of the foundation, I needed to have as few surfaces as possible so they didn't interfere with kind of the overlapping of the foundation. So what I did is just keep all the roofs in place and I came through and I deleted all of the interior walls. I also eliminated a lot of the layers on the walls themselves. These walls are pretty thick. They have some really awesome insulation on it so it's a really efficient build that I'm sure you'll learn about if you read the article. So I minimized those walls so they just had the fewest number of surfaces attached to them in Chief Architect and I killed all of the inside of the house so the interior doesn't exist. So there's no cabinets, there's no walls or interior doors or anything like that. And then next what we had to do is kind of start figuring out a camera angle that we liked. So in my project browser I went ahead and I saved my camera. I made an overview and I saved it as Ghost House. So I'm just going to open that up. And you can see that my overview is of actually the foundation. The article really focuses on some of the details of where this beam attaches to the concrete wall and some of the information about you know those structural elements. So that's what needed to be featured. But we also wanted to help the reader understand where the rest of the house was and how it related. So that's where the idea came from to show kind of the faded top view. So once we had this angle, we saved it off and we end up exporting these images. And I'll show you some of the settings that I use just because I think that these are kind of nice looking illustrations and I just used regular chief features in order to achieve the watercolor with line drawing rendering technique. And then something that isn't really an automatic feature in Chief Architect is showing some of this terrain delineation. So that's another thing that I kind of came up with a, an alternative solution in order to show that automatically so I wouldn't have to draw those in later. But that just simply helps show the slope of the lot so that the reader can really see what the terrain is shaped like. Let's go ahead and talk first about the terrain since I've mentioned that. I'm going to come back into my plan view. And let's go to my foundation. I went ahead, and it's not really typical to do this, but I built on the foundation level. You can see my foundation walls here, and these are those uh, pathway slabs that kind of are on that front of the house. But if I turn on my terrain plan, you can see I've got most layers turned off, but I do have those elevation lines showing down here. So I needed to create a way to delineate those steps in the elevations. And it took me a little while to figure out a good way to do that, but what we actually ended up deciding to do was convert this view to a CAD detail. So in Chief, you just come to CAD, CAD detail from view, and it takes all of the elements that it saw on the screen and it just kind of copies them into a CAD detail. And the cool thing is it converts these into actual lines. So you probably know if you're familiar with Chief Architect in plan view, when you have your terrain elevation lines on screen, you can't select them. That's just one of the limitations of those features. However, once I've converted those away from a smart object and into just a simple CAD line, then now I can select these. And all I did was I chose the lines that I wanted to kind of preserve. So, you know, I kind of group selected the ones that I wanted, and then I can copy those and then use the paste and place tool. So if I come back to my plan view and then choose edit, paste, hold position, then you can see that the program will automatically paste those um, right in place. So why would I want to do that? Well, the next step is to convert those into something that can be seen in 3D. So all I did next was use my convert polyline tool and then I chose 
sidewalk. So this is kind of weird. I know it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it actually worked really well. So if you choose to convert those lines to a sidewalk, then you'll get the specification dialog for setting up the details of what this sidewalk is. So all I did here was set the width and the height of each of those sidewalk elements that I just converted to be very small. I think I made them like, I don't remember, probably a quarter inch wide and a quarter inch tall. And all that does is it tells Chief Architect to go ahead and generate surfaces that can be seen in 3D and those surfaces are automatically going to follow the terrain. And the cool thing is that I know that they're going to exactly mimic those terrain lines that I brought in from the CAD detail because they're right off of a terrain elevation line. That is how you get that look. So this is all automatic. Obviously, I thinned out a lot of the lines because I had way too many. But yeah, these are just simply little sidewalks that are kind of creating that, that look of the terrain. The next settings that I used for this scene were just setting up my watercolor tool. So this is just a watercolor rendering with a uh, line drawing on top. So if you look at my technique options for this, you can see what settings I chose. I really cranked down the smooth amount, and I also turned down the turbulence strength, and I turned up the turbulence scale. And the reason I did that is I really wanted the crispness of each of these surfaces, so I wanted it to look almost more like a rendering with good edges, so like almost like a mix between a vector view and a standard render view. But I did want the softness that the watercolor option gives us, so that's why I turned up the turbulence scale, so you know that blotchiness that the watercolor view gives you. If you turn that up, that makes those blotches very big. And then if you turn the strength value down, so that's this one right here, that takes the intensity of those splotches way down so they aren't so prominent. And so it kind of just gives you a nice little haze over the scene that kind of softens it up. And then the other thing that I always like to do with my line drawings is I like to make the color like a deep gray. So it looks like it's a kind of a graphite or a pencil drawing. For that, these settings are 80 for the RGB values. And then the other things I did were turn up my thickness, turn down my extend amount. So that's the little sketchy extension lines that you can turn on. And then I turned my squiggle amplitude down so that it's not quite so wavy. So I like the result. I feel like it's still got kind of that almost hand-drawn type of an element, but it's still technical enough that you can see what's going on. Once I got that set up and once the editors at Fine Home Building liked the angle and felt like that represented what we needed to see, I went ahead and exported this image. I just chose File Export. I'll go ahead and do that right now. And I wanted this to be at a printable scale so that it could go in the magazine and it could look good. So I set this at a 300 DPI. That's what they print at. And I knew that that image was going to be about, well, you saw it on the layout. It's probably no more than four inches wide. So I set the width to whatever that printable size would have been. And that just gives me the math automatically so I don't have to figure out how many pixels wide or tall it needs to be. And then after I hit those settings, I just hit OK. And that allows me to just export that image. So I just made the first image. OK, so that was the first half for this illustration. Now the second half was to show that first floor plan that I kind of showed without the interior walls. What I actually did was create a new layer set, and I'm calling it Ghost House. So watch what happens when I do this. A couple things, right? You see a lot of white on your screen, and a lot of the foundation is turned off. So all of those layers that were turned on in my plot plan layer set, excluding the terrain and the sidewalks that are those terrain contours, I turned most of those off. And then instead, what I turned on are things like, you know, the walls, the windows, and all of those elements. And then what I did is I came through and I painted everything a white color. And I also just kind of merged a lot of materials together. So you can see this material name is First Stud, 24 inches on center. That seems really bizarre, right? Well, the truth is I had these wall types pared down to only that framing member. So only that first stud was the layer left in the wall. When I was setting it up, I just adjusted the material for that wall layer, which happens to be called the first stud 24 inch on center layer. And I changed the material to white and I took the texture off of here so there's no more file reference and I adjusted the properties to be whatever I wanted those to be. So that gave me just a clean white wall. And then I could do a couple things. I could either take an eyedropper that and I could start painting it all over the rest of the house 
Or we have this cool feature in the plan materials where you can merge materials together. So if you come to the 3D menu and down to materials, plan materials, you can select any group of materials. So I can use my shift key and group select, or I can use my control key and start multi-selecting. Whatever the method you use, you can select all of the entries in your plan materials that you would like to be merged into a single material property. So all of those objects in the plan that are green using a forest service color, for example, will now inherit the color bone material attribute. And this is going to be completely removed and de deleted from the plan, so it won't exist anymore. If you just want to see what that means, if I hit merge, Forest Service is now gone and I have bone is all that's left. So that's a super efficient way to take a whole group of materials that you want to be shared and have the exact same material properties and sew them up and merge them up. So if you are going to do that on a big scale, I'd kind of recommend saving off a copy of your plan as I've done with this ghost house plan. But I've used this before to create kind of those clay looking renderings where maybe you want your entire scene to just be really white or ivory colored. It looks pretty nice when you're doing like a standard view with the ambient occlusion shadows turned on. You see how that gives you kind of that clay model type of a look? It's a really easy way to do that. You just go into your plan materials and then you literally select everything in the entire list and you merge them all together, it's going to take all of those plan materials and leave you just one, whatever this item was at the top. That just simply means everything in your entire model, until you start putting new stuff in, will be whatever this material is at the top of the list. So Anyway, that's a, a whole side note. Um, I kind of got off track there, but it's kind of cool to get to use some of that stuff. So anyway, I created my separate layer set everything that I wanted to show on that layer set is painted white and then I did exactly the same thing where I just exported the image so I just go file export picture and then here I just want to make sure that I use exactly the same values and use the same window size so because I had retain aspect ratio set last time I'm gonna keep it that way and I don't believe I changed any of those values so the reason I care about this on the export is that I'm going to be taking both of these images and I'm going to be overlaying them on each other in Photoshop. So I want to make sure they're exactly the same size because that just guarantees that they're going to line up. Also, the other thing that I want to point out is that I didn't change my floor level. I didn't change my camera angle. I didn't do anything like that. So in order to make sure that everything is perfectly in sync and in line, I only use layer sets. So the only thing that is changing right now are what elements are being displayed in the scene using those layer set controls. So I think that's a pretty important part. It's really powerful to use layer sets to get exactly what you want managed in your scenes. Okay, so that's the chief side. Let's go to Photoshop. Now, I don't even use it very well, so I'm sure you'll notice that as I kind of mess with it. It's just the tool that I have available. I know there are other photo editing programs out there that can probably do exactly the same thing. GIMP is relatively popular and it's a shareware version of photo editing software and I believe it has the same functionalities. I don't use it so I can't really tell you how to do it, but I can show you how to do this using Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is just open my base image, so that's this foundation, and you can see it looks exactly the way it came straight out of Chief Architect. I want this to actually be a layer, so I'm going to change this to layer from background. And that's simply a layer like Chief Architect has layers, so you can turn those on and off. And then I want to bring in my ghost image and put that on top of it. So let's go ahead and find that. And if I just drag that image from my Windows Explorer on top, then I can see that that image comes right in. And it comes in as kind of a, a smart object, so it lets me resize it if I want to. I just hit enter and that kind of sets it into place. Okay, so now you can see I have my foundation and I have my ghost layer on top. From here, it's really a pretty short leap. I'm just going to be very brief in this, but what I did was took my ghost image layer and from the layer options, I chose a layer mask and I chose reveal all. When I do that, you can see two things happen. You get this extra little box over here on the side, so it's kind of like your, your window that you can expose and then your colors have changed from different palette colors to black and white. 
really what you're doing is taking, it's like the steam on a mirror. You're just taking um, a rag or a brush in this case and you're wiping away the steam on the mirror so that you can see what's underneath. The way you do that is you go into the paint mode. So black removes the steam and white puts it back on. So I just use my brush tool. I'm going to make it pretty big, so I'll just crank the size up here. Away we go. So I just start clicking and dragging, and you can see how that fade starts to happen. So I'm just kind of brushing to erase out some of those lower layers of my ghost house so I can reveal the underneath. So that's, that's it. That's really all there is to it. And you can see what changes there is this little mask property so you can see where you've actually erased. If I turn my brush white again, I can just hit this double arrow here. It puts me in a white brush mode. And I can paint that steam back on. So yeah, you're just really controlling the black and white values of this mask property. That's it. We just did detail work from there and cleaned it up the best we could until we kind of settled on a, a scene that seemed like it worked and you have this ghost house image. It's now featured in the August-September issue of Fine Home Building. All right, thanks for joining me.